On today's episode, I interviewed fractional CMO and executive growth marketing consultant, Sam Omidi, who is an accomplished marketing pro with over 20 years of experience as a strategist, as a team leader, and everything in between. And on today's episode, we spoke about managing freelancers, fractional CMO, what that's like, who should do it, and when to hire freelance versus in-house, plus a lot more. So let's dive right into the episode. So um, let, let's start off by level setting, getting to know you a little bit before we dive into, you know, life as a fractional CMO, freelancers as marketers, all that good stuff. If you wouldn't mind just kind of taking us through the, the core bullet points of your career, what what are the milestones that you've kind of hit in your career and how has that led to what you're doing now? Great question. Um, yeah, so I, I think first part I'll mention is I have been basically doing this working now for about three, three years. <laughs> uh, so I've definitely been around the block. Uh, and I think one of the kind of foundational pieces of where I started was what's really kind of led to where I am today. And, and that was really about rolling my sleeves up, getting my hands dirty and, and setting up a blog, doing social media strategies, doing affiliate marketing, getting into email marketing and just doing it all on my own. Yes. Uh, I was doing a house blog called Complete Awesome Training for several years. And it was an amazing experience, not to create a lot of money, but to actually get really hands-on experience and understand things like from a customer's perspective, as well as from uh, maybe a retailer's perspective on kind of how this all kind of comes together. So ever since then, I've been um, doing consulting work uh, on and off, as well as being full-time in different organizations. One of the, I guess, pivotal parts of my career was when I started with Vanka, so Vegas the natural vegan protein powder that's sold across the U.S. and Canada. And um, that was a really, really, I think, amazing experience because I came into the company, they were very kind of still like for no left focus and they were wanting to go mass. And and so when I joined, um, really, I was bringing all my experience together. I knew like what content resonated from the health side. Um, and so what we did was I, I led a whole team in developing a whole website, e-commerce, uh, built out a social media strategy, really focused on building valuable, engaging content, which uh, I thought recipes was like a really, really good kind of focal point for the organizations so that we can incorporate all of the different ingredients and, and protein powders that we were selling. Um, and then also built out a full ambassador program and um, really started to kind of bring it all together. So we kind of went from basically from nothing all the way through a company being acquired for half a billion dollars. Um, and, and it was really an amazing experience to be part of uh, high pressure, but definitely got a lot accomplished. And I think that was kind of the setting point where, yeah, as, as I was going, working with different projects, um, I would kind of stay, stick to the same kind of processes, like understanding who's the target audience, how are we resolving some of those pain points, uh, and how do we bring it all together so that we have a sustainable kind of strategy to forward. And and talk me through kind of what what your day to day is like now as you know fractional CMO consultant. What kind of work are you doing on a day to day basis? Great question. Yeah, so I think uh, now that yeah been doing this for so long, I've kind of um, escalated myself to a fractional CMO so that I can be a little bit more of a generalist and be able to kind of bring it all together. And again. I think this goes back to my root where I was able to get my hands dirty and understand everything from almost every kind of digital marketing uh, specialist roles. Uh, so now when I kind of build teams, that's kind of what I'm looking at is like, how do we make this a comprehensive integrated marketing strategy? Because I think now more than ever, <laughs> uh, you know, ever since COVID happened, it kind of pushed everyone to go digital. And now we're seeing a really hyper competitive digital market, regardless of what industry you are. And so in order to be successful in today's kit, you have to be kind of attacking it from all different angles. Um, and, and that's something that I kind of, yeah, really kind of make sure that we have a team that understands email marketing. They understand the content side, the SEO side, <laughs> uh, the pay-per-click and advertising side, influencer side, like all of those kind of pieces come kind of together uh, so that we have multiple touch points with the customer. We educate them about the products or services we're offering. Um, and then that helps the organization create really good marketing strategy for it. Um, but yeah, really looking for uh, bringing people together that um, they don't have to have like all the experience in the world because with marketing, I don't think you can ever have but, uh, that kind of experience is always, we're always learning. It's always changing and that's going to be kind of keeping us on our toes. 
But what I really look for in people is just people have that drive and energy about what they're passionate about uh, so that they can, I can help them with kind of taking it to the next level. Um, and so when I built those teams, yeah, those are kind of the qualities I'm looking for. People are like really inquisitive. They're asking like, how can I do better? How can I help the team do better? And that I think really has been kind of the formula for the success of teams. Yeah, I definitely want to dive deeper into, you know, hiring, whether that's full-time, part-time, you know, as, as freelancers. But before we dive even further in there, though, on the, on the fractional CMO side, just curious, who, who would be better, you know, or, or enjoy it more as a fractional CMO as opposed to being in-house? Having experienced kind of both sides of, of the equation, what, who, who's suited for which role and why might you consider going fractional as opposed to in-house? That's, that's an interesting question because, uh, yeah, I think I've toyed with that exact type of idea in my hands. What's, what's best in terms of my career? And I think that's one thing I'm really, really grateful to Mark that I hire for is that it's given me this opportunity to be a fractional CMO where I get to work with such diverse organizations, we have diverse teams, and we're tackling very different challenges in each organization. And that kind of learning that I've had kind of, um, kind of brought it, bringing it all together has kind of just taken my uh, experience to a whole new level. Um, and, and so I'm really, really grateful for that because yeah, if you're, if you're working in one organization, you're kind of in that like umbrella, of, you know, what, what that organization is trying to do. And you don't sometimes get the ability to see different perspectives or different challenges in them. And that's what marketer hired has given me that opportunity to be able to be Fractional CMO, we're a whole bunch of different organizations, learning from each experience, bringing that together, uh, and then just kind of taking myself to, to a whole new level. So I think if you're looking at, you know, working somewhere full time, that's definitely something to consider. There's obviously pros and cons to each. <laughs> uh, when you're working full time, you really get to go deeper and deeper and, and hopefully build a team and work with that team to create better strategies moving forward. Uh, whereas a consultant, you're, you're kind of going from one project to the next. So you're kind of building that foundational components, building the team, and then you're kind of going from there. So there's pros and cons, but uh, I just love, again, the fact that I can work with so many different organizations, diverse challenges, and, and learn from those and those teach. Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm curious. Well, first off, within Market or Hire, um, on the freelance side, how, what, what are the different capacities that you are actually hiring freelancers or helping? Are, are you just like consulting with companies? And then maybe helping them to build a, build a team that way. Are you hiring any freelancers yourself? Yeah. So and it's been both. Um, and I'll say straight firsthand right now, I've, I've had this opportunity to work with uh, one of the top air fryer manufacturers in North America. Um, and it's been an amazing experience because the CEO understands that uh, us as consultants can really bring a whole different perspective and, and bring all our experiences into, into the project. So she's given me the opportunity to build out a whole team of consultants who are, I guess, at you know, 10, 11 years experience. Uh, and that's something I think that really sets us apart than if they were just to hire an agency, because typically agencies will have a senior person at the head, and then everyone else will be kind of more junior uh, <laughs> in terms of their experience. Whereas in this situation, I'm working with really, really advanced specialists who are challenging me and learn and making me learn even from them, uh, which makes it such an incredible, viable experience uh, for all of us, but also for the organization, because we get to now formulate what we've been learning from so many different projects into one and, and really like what we're seeing in two months is insane. Like we're seeing five times the revenue goals that they had previously. We're just breaking all records in every aspect in just a few months. And, uh, again, so grateful for that opportunity and, and to be able to kind of bring that into each project and then learn from it and learn from the different uh, team members as consultants. That's, I think, really next level. What What are the kind of projects that you're working on there? Yeah, uh, definitely. So uh, I think as we're kind of going into a more um, social media, influencer, creator kind of world, uh, that's, again, one of the things that's really fascinating for a lot of these more organizations that haven't dabbled in that. And so um, a lot of the strategies that I built now are really, again, first of all, they stem from the content. So what's the, what's really good engaging content that we can make that tells stories, that's engaging, gets people to like and share it, but it's also fun. 
Um, I think, yeah, a lot of organizations get so stuck in towards like the strategies and then they kind of lose the fun part of it along the way. But I think when you have that kind of environment builds with like keeping it fun and light and adding humor everywhere you can, um, it, it just kind of makes people connect with the content better. So really kind of like building out that content strategy as like the core part of it and then translating that into uh, influencers and creators and, and getting their support uh, in terms of like creating similar types of content that's really engaging, tell stories um, and really gets down to like, what are the pain points that again, we're, we're trying to solve uh, with product solution. Uh, so that's one, I think, really good example that's so relevant today for a lot of these organizations. If, um, if we dive a little bit into like hire the, the actual act of hiring fractional people, freelancers, for example, if you're working with a company and you help them build out a, a fractional team, let's say, how do you think about mentoring those people or, or like getting them up to speed on the project quick enough? So it's, it's not just a month, two months of context and getting into the groove before you actually do anything. Yeah, so I, I think it always for me stems from the data side. So um, I, I love to get people to just like get into the data. And if they don't have that, all that experience that they need, then I kind of just facilitate that. But look at like, what is the data telling us from where we are today? So um, look at like, what's the most engaging content? Where are people kind of visiting um, and interacting with that content? Is it on social media? Is it on the blog? Uh, how are we going to keep that kind of fluidity between um, creating really good content that's going outwards into social uh, media, but also making sure that we're bringing people back into the site and helping. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of the, like the, the fractional kind of roles uh, to, to really kind of make sure that they get up to speed with that. We look at the data side, we look at like what the content is today, and then really quickly kind of take all our learnings uh, and make sure that we have like similar principles, best practices that we're following uh, to create that really strong foundation. Yeah, so typically, as you said, like we can we can get up to speed in a few weeks rather than several months. Uh, where you know, in typical like full time companies, that's really work. That's really what it takes. For sure. Have you have you approached the the way of building a marketing team that you do it the way that you do it now? Is that how you've always approached it, or do you feel like that's changed, adapted more and more over time? Yeah, I, I think kind of. Um, several years ago, uh, again, one of the things I, I, I learned from one of my mentors was if, if you have the right people in the roles, you're going to be successful. And, and what he meant by that to me was that you're finding people who are not just doing what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but they have that passion behind it. And if they don't have that passion, they're not in the right role. So so that's something I always like question when I start with someone who is like, what's your passion in email marketing or whatever that role is to kind of get them to really think about it. How do they want to escalate their knowledge and experience and take their, their side to the next level so that I can help kind of feed them um, and kind of facilitate that as best as I can. But really that's kind of like, yeah, the core of, uh, of how I try and lead my teams to first find their passion. Uh, and then build that into the framework of the strategies uh, that we're working on for our tips. Yeah, let's let's pivot just a, a little bit because a hot topic of the day is AI. I just want to get your thoughts on this really quick. Uh, how you're using it, if if at all, what you trust AI to do in your workflows, what you don't trust it to do. Yeah, <laughs> ongoing discussion with every organization is how do we how do we use AI to our advantage, and I think. Um, Working with my partner, Jason, who's really on the content side, that's one of the things that we've been diving into is like, you know, what is the, what part of the equation does AI play into this? Uh, and I think the one thing that we've really observed is using AI to help kind of create the thought process or give you kind of that nudge you need to kind of move, put everything together in, in a way that really makes sense. Uh, so really that's kind of the basis of how we use AI today is like, Use it to kind of like build the ideas inside of it and then take it and make it your own and then your experience and other kind of levels to it, but not relying on the AI to do everything that uh, we're using as kind of like the settings and uh, setting the point towards getting us uh, to just like move faster and then different ideas that we already know in our head, but just 
helps us put it together really quick and concise way. Um, as as we kind of wrap up here, a couple, couple final questions. One around MarTech. When you're looking at the, the tools that you use all the time, whether it's for yourself or for the companies that you work with, things that they're, they're constantly using, are there a couple, maybe two or three marketing tools that if they went away would be kind of like devastating to you? Yeah, so I guess it obviously depends on the different industries uh, that are out there, whether you're SaaS or direct-to-consumer e-commerce. Uh, I'm a little bit more on the e-commerce side. That's kind of where I find a lot of the, the, uh, my passion so to get those results. Uh, so speaking to that, I would say that there's, I think, two pieces of mark, mark, marketing tech that really have really impressed me, and that's the combination of Klaviyo with Shopify sites. Um, and, and Klaviyo, I think, has kind of been the first email marketing platform that I've worked with that really allows you to see every single test point a user with your store, your content, do they look at emails, do they purchase, what products do they look at, all that information so that you can create different segments and hyper-personalize per hyper your content. It's, it's more meaningful to the user who's on the other side of it. Um, so those two together, I think, are definitely critical um, in terms of like, yeah, just giving you that full picture of what is that uh, customer journey. And, and then layered on top, that would be um, so, a similar tool to like maybe Triple Well. I think Triple Well is still in its almost like beginner stage. I think there's a lot of room for it to grow, but I think it's one of the first tools that I've used where it really helps you understand the attributions. So that's like, what are all the different test points for someone who's starting off, you know, really kind of at the top of the funnel, warming him up, nurturing them into becoming not only a customer, but an advocate. That gives you that really kind of full picture of like, what are all those test points and, and how do we continue to uh, make sure that we're using the channels that are giving us the best results uh, so that, yeah, we don't just take one thing out because we have an assumption on it, but uh, we're not completely sure. And we can now use Triple Well to understand, did that have a test point? What was the effectiveness of that test point? Um, and making sure that it all comes together. Wrap, wrapping it up here, if you, you mentioned that you've been in marketing for 20, 20 plus years, I think. So you've, you've got some experience now and things have changed a lot since you began. I'm, I'm just curious if you had one piece of advice to give your year one self as a marketer, um, what, what would that be to kind of help you shortcut a lot of the, a lot of the years and get you to where you are now, but quick. This is actually something that's, um, I think been top of mind for me, especially in the last year, because I think as marketers, one thing we, we forget is that marketing is a perfect, it's not a perfect science. It's, you can take one strategy for one company and that was really successful and apply it to a different company and it will completely fail. And then I think that's the takeaway that I have today is don't beat yourself up along the way when things don't work. It's gonna, it's just a natural part of marketing. The main thing is just learning from each one of those experiences um, and, and not looking at it in a negative way. So how could it, how did it challenge me if I came across something where there's an organization, for instance, where it was just like so much, there was so much weight on my shoulders um, and I started beating myself up over it. But rather than just like looking at it as like, that was a really challenging experience. Uh, it allowed me to kind of take myself to the next level. And now moving forward in every project, I can rely on that knowledge and experience to continue to like put me in the right direction. So yeah, really at the end of the day, it's just like, don't beat yourself up over it. Just learn from it, take it to the next project and just go, just do it better. Awesome. Well, Sam, where can people find you online? What's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, so LinkedIn is probably um, probably one of the best uh, yeah ways to get in touch with me. Otherwise, I do have my uh, agency website, breathemedia.com. Um, yeah, paid to, to converse with anyone who's interested in the space. 